Ladies and gentlemen, welcome back to Gothic Cycle. I'm my host. So, now I'm going to go ahead and put in my new bicycle disc brake rotor screws. Which means I'm going to be taking out some old ones and replacing them with some of the new ones. And I'm going to explain to you the purpose of the ones that I have now. So, here we go. So, the ones I got were these ones right here. And I can't see it very well because of lighting. And on top of that, uh, I'm usually recording in black and white and not in color. But uh, if you could see this stuff, but you can't. Which is actually very interesting. But this is actually what's called a Loctite screw. The Loctite is basically a sealant. The uh, way to keep the screws in there so it doesn't just take itself out. It's also known as a thread lock. So it basically locks the thread into the place of the wedge plane of the screw. So that way it doesn't come out by its own self, like somehow my previous ones did. So, which, like I said, I only have two out of six of my original screws there. So, replacing it with some Loctite rotor screws. So, I'm going to go ahead and put this part in the color for a little bit so I can actually show you. So, now that you can actually see, this blue part right here is not all the way around the screws. It's partially around it. So... That blue stuff right there is what's called Loctite. That Loctite is what actually keeps the screws from just unscrewing itself or being rattled enough to, for it to be unscrewed. Bicycle rattling, shaking and stuff like that. And whatever. Loctite uh, thread locks the screw so it doesn't just come out. So this right here is the part where the uh, screw came undone from. Don't know why, but it came undone by its own self, which I mentioned in the previous video. So, because of that, I only have two of these things stuck to there, and under normal circumstances, you do not want to actually touch your bare finger to the rotor itself, but because I'm touching this part, now I'll be just fine. What you do not want to do at all, if you can at all help it, is touch this part right here. So, if you touch this part right here, that's a bad no-no, because then your finger grease will get all up under there, it'll get inside the brake up in here, and then it'll make squeaky sounds and stuff like that, and you'll have to actually fix that problem, and I don't feel like fixing that problem. I do have the materials to fix it up, but I'm not going to fix it up. Myself going to avoid as much as I possibly can touching the rotor itself, but touching this part is just fine. So, I mean, I would actually recommend having gloves, vinyl gloves, rubber gloves, whatever kind of gloves, mechanics gloves, but uh, do not touch this part at all. If you can at all, avoid it. So, what I need right here is that right there. So, I have that in the perfect position to actually put the screws inside there. But first, I'm going to go ahead and put some screws inside of here, and then I'll show you the difference between the Loctite stuff and also the regular screws. Now, in these packages, you actually get two of these small packages within that package that I opened up earlier, which is this package right here. And it comes with two of these because in each of these packages, there are six screws. Six, that would be one package for each rotor. So each of my rotors has six screws attached to them. So has a total of 12 screws right there. Star wrenches. So I need stars for that one. Because I already have two screws in here, I'm just going to use one screw to put in there for right now. Again. I know that wasn't exactly a clear picture of this. And what you're trying to avoid is uh, crossing threads. You don't want to cross threads. But I'm not crossing threads. I went in there successfully, so I'm good. I don't have a torque wrench or anything like that, so I can't use that to torque it. Well, let's just make sure it's in there nice and tight, but not too terribly tight. You want to tighten enough to where it's not going to come loose, but the thread lock's going to do its job anyways. And then from there, just spin the wheel.
if you guys are wondering, you can actually get this here, which comes with a pack of this right here. You get a simple pack like that for like 10 bucks at Walmart. Or if any bicycle shops have it too, you can get it from a bicycle shop. So it does not have Loctite on it, and it's kind of chiseled off right here. Hope this video is not too long for y'all. Now I don't know if you guys are gonna want me to explain stuff or you guys just want to see me do it and you guys watch and learn from there or learn from me explaining while I'm doing or because I know people are different. Some people learn by simply watching, some people are the kind that need to explanation while things are going on. So I don't know if I'm going to need a little bit of mix of both, so... I know I'm not going to be able to satisfy everybody. And that would be impossible. And I can honestly do both ways. And I can just simply watch and see how it's done and do it myself afterwards. Or have someone explain it to me and then from there I can do it myself. Or both. I can have someone explain to me while I'm watching at the same time, so if I don't get what they're saying, I'm seeing what they're saying. Or, if I don't know what I'm doing by actually doing the thing, then I can watch what they're saying and saying what they watch, if that makes any sense. I can watch it while they're explaining it to, explaining it to me, and I can also see what they mean at their explanations. But I think I'll get the point, so. But if y'all rather have an explanation, I'll do an explanation. If y'all just want me to have videos where I just do it, then I'll do that. Or if you guys want to mix, then I'll do that. Or if you guys simply just don't care one way or another, have at it, then I'll just have at it. Well, if you guys want me to do a live tutorials, I can also do live tutorials too, since I can actually go live on this channel. I just haven't done it yet. I haven't really had a reason to do so. I don't know how to do speed runs, so I can't do a speed run yet. A proper way to do this will be the same way you do a regular car. You'd actually want to do this going here, 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 and all that stuff, doing the opposite, but... I'm not going to sit there and try to fiddle with that. <laughs> Especially when this is already on my bike. So, I'm just going to do this one at a time as I go. Is it recommended to do the opposite first or not? Well, I personally, and it's just me speaking for myself personally, don't really see a difference. I've actually personally done both ways on a car, with my car, 
and it didn't. It's never made a difference. So whoever made it the rule, you're supposed to do it opposite wise, or whoever made it the rule, you're supposed to do it one at a time as you go. I'd say either way and both ways work. <laughs> so, like I said, I've done it both ways myself personally, so speaking for myself, it don't really matter. And I'm pretty sure you guys don't want to see me sit there and just screw this on the entire time, so I'll go ahead and pause it and then show you guys what it looks like after I'm done. So, now I got all my newer stuff on there, and this is the old ones. And this one here, the bottom one, actually did actually have some Loctite on there, which is actually kind of surprising. And you can see a little mark right there that was actually Loctite on there. And it just shows up as silver, but it's actually blue. I got it on there now, so all six of them. Hope you enjoyed that, and as always, love and peace. Until next time, meet. I will say though, out of a bicyclist pro tip for those of you who do your do your own projects or something like that, and own self bicycle maintenance, make sure you keep your old stuff because you never know when you might need it if you ever need it at all. Better safe than sorry.